ये कांग्रेस के नेतृत्व ने जो आउटसोर्सिंग से चुनाव लड़ने का एक प्रयास किया था इसका नतीजा है जिस ईवीएम के अंदर रिकाउंटिंग हुई है उसी के अंदर कई बार चेंज हुए हैं। मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि जो जीता वही सिकंदर अभी तो कुछ नहीं बोलूंगा क्योंकि अभी हाल में ही वो अध्यक्ष बने हैं लेकिन सिर मुड़ाते ही बोले पड़े गृह राज्य में उस उनकी मजबूती कम हुए ये साबित करती है कि देश में क्या हालात है पीपल ऑफ गुजरात ट्रस्ट बीजेपी डेवलपमेंट दे है लीडरशिप ऑफ नरेंद्र मोदी जी विकास की राजनीति जो है वो जातिवाद की राजनीति पर विजय हुई है टाइड टर्न अगेंस्ट अस टाइड विल टर्न अगेन फॉर अस एंड आई थिंक द ट्रेंड सर्टेनली सजेस्ट अ मच मोर पॉजिटिव डायरेक्शन आई वाज अ जी मिस्टर आई वाज यूजिंग द पार्टी हियर सो इट इज माय रिस्पांसिबिलिटी आल्सो अंडर द लीडरशिप ऑफ द गांधी इज द कांग्रेस हैज बीन श्रिवलिंग अप इन वन स्टेट आफ्टर द अदर एंड इट्स गोइंग टू बी अ कांग्रेस मुक्त भारत वेरी सोन Well, that is what politicians across political lines make of the election result. Joining us now to discuss the implications of this verdict, BJP spokesperson Syed Zafar Islam, Congress spokesperson Sanjay Jha, Yogendra Yadav of Swaraj India, political economist Shankar Rayar, Shailesh Kumar of the Eurasia Group, joining us from Washington D.C., Ruzan Kambata, social activist and entrepreneur. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Zafar Islam, let me start by asking you. Well, uh, a victory is a victory, and as uh, all bjp leaders have been saying jo jeeta wahi sekandar so we're not taking anything away from the victory for both the state of gujarat as well as himachal pradesh but let's talk about the crucial state of gujarat zafar islam your own estimates were 150 i mean till day before yesterday on my show when i repeatedly asked you that question after the exit polls do you still stick with 150 and you were very confident you said yes we stick with 150 even internal estimates within the bjp suggested that it would not be anything less than 130 5 what's gone wrong well shere let me tell you very honestly the elections are over bjp has won this election and as you rightly said jo jeeta wahi sekandar but having said that let me tell you this election was a very tough election and uh, and uh, it's it not not because of any in anti incumbency but primarily because of the negative campaign mm -hmm. by congress party and the divisive policy which the congress party has followed and they were pursuing along with other other uh, uh, islam uh, may i remind you sir may i remind you till till 48 hours Please. ago you said there was no contest you said you were sweeping gujarat zafar on my show several times over those were the comments that bjp spoke i did i did like i mean i'm not i'm not there was no contest in I'm the state of gujarat that. now you're saying it was a tough fight i'm not denying that but that was the election strategy i must uh, uh, you must appreciate that uh, when you are in the battle you do not uh, 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 do, do not open all your cards and uh, i today i must admit that the battle was very it was a tough battle and what is what important for us to target something which is difficult for everyone to imagine but we have we had delivered in the past in uttar pradesh nobody had imagined we will deliver 300 300 plus seats and in gujarat we were aiming at 300 150 uh, seats but of course we knew very well that the ground reality is different that people are Uh, pursuing negative yeah. campaign people are pursuing uh, divisive policy hmm. people are pride, uh, trying to uh, appease a, a section of the society and that is something which is detrimental for any any uh, election campaign and we wanted okay, to stick know, to our election let, let's be clear let's be clear and that is what said, actually has helped all, us this is all part the congress will accuse you of playing a negative campaign of uh, of also uh, appeasing a certain section let's not go down that road i think uh, uh, to be fair there are important lessons to be learned for all parties involved in this election and for those who of us who are also covering this election on what this will actually mean for uh, for the national uh, politics as well as for the crucial state elections that are coming up in 2018 but let me bring our other guests into this conversation and before i get uh, sanjay jha in we live in an era of alternative facts as we just heard there from uh, from the bjp spokesperson till 48 hours ago there was no contest and suddenly it is emerged as a tough fight but what do you think changed i don't think much changed i think they knew what they were faced with mm. the the argument that they the congress ran a negative campaign mystifies me because i mean what did they expect the congress to do 
say that the BJP ran a good government, but please vote for us. That's the, so the Congress picked up a strategy. Mm. I mean, it's like cricket. I mean, you know, if the opponent team is good at pace, you will not pick up pace sure. bowlers. You will pick up sp spin yeah. bowlers. So the Congress picked up on all the pain points. Mm. And there are three pain points in Gujarat, so which are common poking, to the... poking a hole in the Gujarat development model. Not so much as the Gujarat model, as much as the fact that it would resonate across the country. Mm. So the first thing that they picked up was agrarian distress, which yeah. was highlighted by the Patidar agitation. Yeah. The fact of youngsters going with Hardik and Alpesh and Jignesh showed that the youth was disenchanted mm. because of job, job. creation. Yeah. And the third was there is a genuine distress in small and medium mm. enterprises. Which hasn't shown up, at least not if you look at what's no. happened in urban so, Gujarat. So, yeah. so, so if you see in the peri-urban vote, yeah. it will show up. If you see Surendranagar, Amreli, it will show up. Mm. So the point is that in Surat, they put everything into the battle to mm. retain the mm. say. Okay, also these are transitory issues. Yeah. And the fault that they didn't lose lies with the Congress yeah. because the Congress only flagged the issues but has no solution to offer. Sure. Sure, the Congress has no solution to offer and which is probably why the Congress couldn't capitalize on the anger and the disenchantment that was very palpable on the ground. But Yogendra Yadav, uh, you know, while there was a lot of talk about demonetization and GST, etc., as Shankar was pointing out, and that's what the, the numbers also suggest, uh, that you know areas like surat continue to remain bjp bastions they they might have been angry but they have not voted against the bjp but where it has hurt the bjp and where it has cost them seats is the urban rural divide and we discussed this a week ago on my show uh, if you look at what's happened as far as urban gujarat is concerned 55 seats the bjp getting 43 the congress 12 rural gujarat 127 seats the bjp getting 56 and the congress 71 so the fact of the matter is that the focus of uh, the Congress on highlighting rural distress, agrarian distress has paid off for them and has worked against the BJP Yogendra Yadav. Uh, Shirin, frankly, I didn't expect GST to become a major electoral loss, uh, sw I mean, swing issue in Gujarat. Uh, you know, this is uh, mm. at the most generous estimate, even in a society like Gujarat, which is very commercial trade oriented what would be the proportion of those who are you know those who even know what gst is uh, hardly 10 percent sure. uh, those who have to have any direct dealing with it uh, the real issue mm. was going to be uh, demonetization partly because it affects everyone and above all agrarian crisis uh, and to be absolutely mm. honest uh, i'm actually surprised that congress did not make enough of it uh, do remember that even okay. in 2012, Congress had all, was almost at par with the BJP in these rural areas. So they have mm. surged ahead slightly. Mm. But given the opportunity, given the level of agrarian distress, yeah. given the fact that both cotton and groundnut mm. prices has crashed this year, given that uh, people were angry, mm. Well, I mean, it, it is true. I agree with uh, the other panelist, uh, Shankar, who, who said that Congress focused on the right things. Yes, Congress focused on economy, which it should mm. have. Uh, they did not allow themselves to mm. be distracted. They focused on agrarian issues. Were they loud enough? Were they credible enough? Yeah. Uh, that's a question we should ask, mm. because what happened in Saurashtra, if half of that was repeated in north and central Gujarat, we would have been discussing something yeah. altogether yeah. different. Yes, BJP enjoys a six percentage gap, a margin, but it would have taken mm. just two percent swing to change the entire picture. Mm. So my own sense is, while the Congress would say moral victory and everything else, once they have yeah. an honest closed-door mm. discussion, and I sincerely hope they do, they would mm. say, boss, an opportunity missed. <laughs> Boss, an opportunity Miss Sanjay Jha, let me come to you with that. Uh, that uh, and that, I think, is, uh, is, is the overwhelming feeling here within the studio as well. Most panelists believe that, yes, the Congress focused on the right issues, but did you do enough? Did you run uh, an effective enough campaign to capitalize on converting the anger into votes for the Congress party? Sanjay Jha, you were not loud enough, you were not credible enough, perhaps you didn't have the organizational cadre uh, on the ground backing you. Look at the sorry state of affairs as far as your own senior leaders in the state are concerned. Uh, and 
perhaps the biggest positive has been the fact that you've been able to get on board Hardik Patel, Alpesh Thakur and Jignesh Mevani who've done a good job for you. Uh, Shirin, uh, you know, since we are likely to be losing this election, uh, you know, I will take all the feedback or the criticism in, in the right spirit. Uh, you know, I think on the positive side, we fought a truly a disciplined campaign. Uh, we never wanted this entire Gujarat election to, you know, go back to the perverse, uh, parochial kind of a political campaign, which mm. essentially goes back to religious polarization and communal stress. And I'm glad we never veered mm. away from it, although I think our principal opponent did that. But, you know, the key point I feel, Shirin, when I look at the positives out of the campaign, is that I think it's opened up the doors for the 2019 election. You know, th there's only two statistics mm. I'll share with you. I mean, if you look at uh, the two, 2014 Lok Sabha election, which is the last uh, critical benchmark to compare it with, uh, you, you, we were, you know, our vote shares were negligible by comparison to BJP, almost a 20-point difference. And yeah. uh, secondly, I think in terms of the assembly seats, we led in barely 17. And, and 20, it was 26-0 in terms of Lok Sabha. Now, 26-0 in Lok Sabha, mm. and now you're down to around 99-80 or 96-83. It yeah. tells you that there is a significant uh, change happening at the ground level in Gujarat. Now, I concede to the point that we have definitely got a lot of homework to do where urban Gujarat is concerned, which is why I think to a great extent what Yogendra Yadavji says, and I have a lot of respect for Yogendra, that the point that he makes is that we actually did not capitalize on the angst in urban Gujarat. Now, we knew that the rural no, Gujarat clearly was didn't. clearly disenchanted, disillusioned with a, with a Gujarat model mm. that has been lopsided. We tried very hard. Actually, we did very hard. But, you know, end of day, you know, the Gujarat, therefore the, the Gabbard Singh tax, demonetization, the state of the economy and jobs, we brought them up. It hasn't worked. But then, you know, you live sure. uh, to fight another day, and I think we will. Okay, I, and I, I like, take it I like the, the fact that we've got, uh, we've got party, now party spokespeople now, now willing to be honest, willing to be honest uh, on the day of the electoral results. Uh, uh, Zafar Islam, a quick word from you before I uh, go across to Razan. No, all I'm saying that, that this is an emphatic victory for Bharatiya Janata Party for two reasons. Because the pe after 22 years of serving people, incumbency definitely sets in. But there was no incumbency at, as such, as I, as I sure. said earlier. And that's why people have reposed faith in Bharatiya Janata Party and they have discarded okay. the negative politics okay. which they have pursued. Secondly, what I, I would like to tell Can you I that say uh, one thing. I, even the re issues... Yeah, yeah. Even the issues they were raising in terms of development, actually the development what has taken place in Gujarat mm -hmm. is something people have bought this argument because they have experienced the good thing whatever has happened in Gujarat. But whatever they, they, uh, okay. the uh, Congress so. was trying so. to expose to yeah, us okay, okay. something you, you're which making, they actually... You're making your pre-poll argument something. again. Zafar Islam, you're making your pre-poll argument Today, again. Again, no, 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 I'm, I'm not making... All I'm trying to respond to Janja Ja... <laughs> All I'm trying to respond to Sanjay, sure. but today, uh, who's, today who's we have won the election. I just wanted to say I, that. Go ahead. And, no, no, go I, ahead. and he was. No, no. I just uh, wanted to make a one liner, that, that, no, which no, is simply no, this: that while the. <laughs> uh, uh, while the BJP would say all this for external consumption, I hope when they have internal review, and I hope they would be honest when they do it, yeah. they would say, boss, this was scary. We almost lost it. And we need to do something on the rural front. We were lucky we had a Narendra Modi in Gujarat to do it. Yeah. We may not, he may not yeah. have that kind of magic in Karnataka, in Madhya Pradesh, and so on. That's a lesson for BJP, mm. I think, I mm. hope. Mm. Okay, and that's the point that I want to take to you, Ruzan. And, you know, I think uh, uh, I've been reading Prashant Jha from uh, the Hindustan Times through the course of this campaign, and he summed it up really nicely. Is this a trust vote or a mercy vote for the BJP on account of Narendra Modi? I mean, it's absolutely clear that it is the Prime Minister that has won the BJP this election in Gujarat. Uh, trust vote, mercy vote. See, too, I mean, uh, let me first explain to you the whole thing, that how did they come to the target of 150? The logic which went behind it that when last time Mr. Modi uh, fought in 2012, there were 115 seats which they won when Modi was there. So this time they believed that with Mr. Modi at the center and BJP at the state level, obviously they added these plus seats uh, in the name of Mr. Modi. But they did not realize that the local Gujarat cadre had become very weak mm. and in fact the whatever development model they are talking of 
but in the last two to three years, actually practically everything was at a standstill. Mm. Now, when these elections came up, obviously five months back, uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, issues with the with the BJP government in terms of the local government yeah. I'm talking of. And that is why people were slowly, slowly shifting towards Congress. Mm. And yes, Congress did get that uh, strategy right initially with the Vikas Gandoche and, you know, no development and talking about farmers and Patidar issues, Dalit yeah. issues, OBC yeah. issues. But then it happens that, that yes, Gujarat, if it was at just for the Gujarat BJP, they would have 100% lost. But because when Mr. Modi, Modi came, came into came the in. picture. Now, hold a second. One more important thing. That people looking, uh, every 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 uh, spokesperson of BJP is harping on the fact that, uh, that this is the sixth win, that that's the biggest yeah. win, blah, blah, things like that. And they could counter the anti, mm. anti incumbency But I would rather like to say that for people of Gujarat, mm. the very first thing was that for, for them it might be the sixth term. For us, it was the first term. The reason being that after Mr. Modi, Modi went to yeah. as a PM, we are looking from 2014 onward. So for the Gujarati people thought it is their duty to mm. see to it that in a Gujarat also there is a BJP government because the BJP at both the places, like Mr. Modi himself said, yeah. Dono hath mein laddu, yeah. aapka center mein bhi laddu, Gujarat mein bhi laddu. Yeah. So he wanted people to understand that. And that is the only reason BJP could garner this 99 to 100 or 102 seats. Otherwise, I mean, that would, otherwise the BJP Modi, would the, have been at a great the, loss. The Modi factor, the Modi factor has clearly played the most crucial part as far as this election is concerned but